so I, I'm Jessica. I am um, the Go React account executive that really heads up everything from Ohio down to Maryland and North. So I've been with Go React a little over three years and um, really helped many different higher ed, teacher ed programs, um, as well as K-12 districts utilize Go React. Like I said, it's a pleasure to meet all of you as well. Um, so to talk through a little bit about Go React, we're just going to go ahead and jump right in. Before I share my screen, though, I just want to give you a little bit of Go React, uh, of an idea where Go React really fits within the K-12 space and what other um, K-12 districts have really come to Go React for. Um, we're utilized pretty heavily in the K-12 um, segment. And it's really designed to help support districts um, who work with their faculty and their teachers on skills from induction initiatives, really all the way through continuing ed and professional development. It really couples awareness through the use of video with contextual time coded input or feedback from a mentor, a trusted advisor, um, or even it can be utilized for self reflection purposes on lessons um, or even segments where a um, teacher wants to record themselves and self reflect on how that particular um, part of their lesson went to um, make any changes and really observe themselves. It really makes it easy to observe a teacher without having to leave the classroom or any of your duties as well. And that's because the system is completely portable. All you need is a cell phone or a laptop, tablet, any device that really has the internet, has an internet browser and is web enabled. I know one of the biggest challenges that districts are really facing currently is how to support their teachers, both the new teachers as well as um, growing teachers in their profession while there's also a teacher and substitute shortage so really giving this ability to connect your best teachers whether they be at a different building whether they be at a um, different location with those new and um teachers receiving uh, informal or formal observations. Um, you don't have to really have a substitute in place. You can connect and observe without getting that substitute. Now, I know districts are also facing um, the challenge, and this is one of the reasons why they really come to Go React, because they're looking to have a tool to help facilitate the process of working with faculty and connecting faculty across the district, like I said, without even having to leave the classroom. Um, they're able to use that through Go React. Another challenge that a lot of districts are coming to us for is that they're needing a way to really meet the state requirements and standards for induction or professional development support. But again, coupled with a substitute shortage, coupled with a teacher shortage, they're struggling to find ways to achieve those standards and uh, meet those requirements for those particular purposes. Now, we talked a lot about supporting those teachers, and I'll show you exactly how GoReact supports them, but budgets are very, very important too. Um, and staying within the parameters of those budgets sometimes create some roadblocks for utilizing particular tools, completing informal and formal observations of your teachers. Um, and to be completely honest, substitute teachers are much more expensive than using Go React even for a single time. So with budgets being stretched, time being stretched, with Go React, you can really save time and budgets by completing their observations in a um, an assessment, even in a portable manner. Now, Go React also is FERPA compliant. It's COPPA compliant, so we do have those um, security aspects in place. Because anytime you talk about utilizing video, 
all of those concerns come up as well. So we're going to go ahead and jump into the tool, but just want to ask if there's any questions that you have on your mind that you're thinking through, um, knowing really where Go React has fit within um, K-12 districts so far. I don't think so. I think we're just excited to see the product a little bit more and um, you know see some use cases for it. Perfect. So I'm going to go ahead and jump in and share my screen. Let me go ahead and share this tab. Perfect. Are you guys able to see my screen here? Yes. Yep, looking good. Awesome. I'm going to just pull you guys over to the left too so I can see everybody here. Awesome. So this is going to be the Go React dashboard. Now, Go React can operate as a standalone tool or it can live and reside it within a learning management system, depending on what you use for coaching, what you use at your individual district as well. Teachers can um, just quickly start any assignments. They can list themselves, it'll auto list themselves as a presenter, and then they can click continue. They're gonna have different ways to get their videos within Go React. Now, what you're gonna see here is going to also be changing as far as like a course structure, that kind of thing. That's gonna be coming later on this year um, as, we, as we really broaden our use cases of utilizing video in, the, um, in that particular manner. But teachers can record directly into Go React. They could also, if they don't have that stable Wi-Fi connection, they could record outside of Go React and then upload their video as well within the tool. Now we do integrate directly with YouTube and Zoom, um, where videos, maybe it is a um, coaching session or something of that sort um, that is completed on an additional manner, those can also be brought into Go React for feedback, for um, that video just to be housed somewhere, for easy access to reference those videos as well. And now if it is a Google Meets, you can always record that and then upload that at a later time too. So I'm interested, like we here at the ESC, we have um, one of the like paid versions of uh, of Google, and so we have the ability to stream directly to YouTube. So I'm okay. wondering if like because all it's really doing is just capturing the YouTube video at that point. Um, I'm guessing like Go React just captures the YouTube video, whatever that link is. So once it's done, or once that stream is done from Google Meet, you could theoretically just share the link, and today the video would be up there. Correct. Yep, yeah. you just share that that video. Then you have access to all of those videos. People can ask further questions. You'll be able to see all those questions and continue the conversation afterwards. It doesn't have to just be, um, a, you know, one sided or, or one way. You don't have to resort to email and go back and forth. You can really keep that conversation going um, between the ESC and your educators, but also among themselves as well. You can open everything up for peer review um, so that people People can keep that conversation going around those particular topics that you've um, you've uploaded videos for. Any other questions before I jump into this particular example? I don't think so. Okay, so I'm going to jump into this particular video, and I'm going to go ahead and mute this. But you do have full audio capabilities, um, just so I'm not talking over it. One thing that you notice, being that this is a recording, my video automatically pauses. Um, going back to the portability aspect of this too, you can um, be providing feedback for this teacher or coaching for this teacher asynchronously, but you can also be providing it synchronously. You could be providing it synchronously in person, but with time constraints and um, sometimes location constraints, you could provide this to them in a remote location. So they just set up their cell phone or laptop or tablet, any device that's web enabled. And then you're on your end being able to provide them with really contextual time coded feedback. Okay, I'll show you that now, but um, on the left hand side, as this video plays, um, with this being a recording, you can also double time this or time and a half this to get through the video a little bit further. You can always jump in the video anywhere as well. Okay, 
What you'll notice on the right hand side when I start typing my particular piece of feedback, okay, you'll see that my video pauses, really allowing me the time I need to complete my thought. Now, if you're doing this synchronously, your video is not going to stop. However, when you press enter or return on this piece of feedback that you want to leave for this teacher, it timestamps that piece of feedback. It's going to timestamp it from the moment that you started typing, allowing that teacher all of the context that they need to know exactly where your feedback comes to play within their lesson. Okay. I'm not sure anyone in the room that is a um, sports fanatic, but really this is taking that film study in sports and utilizing it in the most valuable ways within the classroom. And film study has really been around since the 1950s. So it's had quite some time to be proven and effective as well. Now, um, what you'll notice here, these colored buttons, we're going to go through the different types of feedback, starting with your markers. Your markers, instead of typing out something, your markers can be anything that you want to create them to be. I can just click on these. I can also add multiple markers to one particular comment if I wanted to do so. Okay. We looked, took a look at the text feedback as well, but you have video feedback, you have audio feedback, you can upload a video to reference or a document to reference or a PDF to reference, an image to reference, anything of that sort. You can build a library of any videos that you want to easily access to reference as well. You can provide your that teacher with a YouTube link, a Zoom link, um, and we went through the other four options here. Okay, all of those feedback types do get time coded. So if you flip the script here, like Matthew, you were saying, if you have this video of a session that you've hosted and invite all of your um, teachers, all of your educators to watch this particular video, you can communicate not just through text, but you can communicate through video, you can communicate through audio, really creating that community of educators as well. Now, um, in creating that community, you can always reply to other people's um, comments or feedback. Um, if you are looking at this from an induction or professional development lens, you can keep that conversation going with your mentor as well, asynchronously, if it's hard to find time to meet together. Now, talking through a synchronous experience, you can actually have multiple people join a particular Go React session, just like a Google Meet session, just like a Zoom session. Um, however, everything is going to be recorded and available for those particular teachers after the fact as well. Um, with that in mind, any conversations, any um, administration can always jump in to that conversation as well. You have evidence and documentable evidence here if needed, okay? Um, with that, and speaking to that particular evidence, if you need to document the form, the informal or formal observations needing to be completed, all of what you're capturing here is data that is all extractable. So I know from an administrative perspective, a lot of times um, they're, they're very, very interested in all of that data that they can uh, look at, especially for any new teachers. And that really takes me to where you can include any rubrics um, or any assessment in here as well, particularly for those um, for those formal observations, but also uh, keeping in mind for any induction programs, being able to help your new teachers refine their skills um, after they get out of graduation or once they get out of their um, teacher prep program. Okay. Any questions on the types of feedback here, keeping that conversation going or completing that assessment? 
I don't think so. I mean, I just from my lens, like this is awesome. Like I, I know we have yet to talk uh, money, and you said like uh, you know it's much more beneficial than uh, you know the cost of a substitute or whatnot. But Absolutely. Like a really powerful and easy tool, um, you know, to to do feedback in that way. Now, um, is it are you, you thinking this is primarily for like administrators to use with teachers or has there been any applications of like teachers using it with students? So we do have some application of teachers using this with students, particularly in foreign language and American Sign Language programs in um, K-12. Generally, that's more in the um, in the high school level. Um, I will note that um, it, within our um, it's called a EULA, what everybody has to check off um, all the end user licensing agreement um, for the particular students. They do have to check off that they're 13 or older, just like you, uh, YouTube, just like they have to do with um, Facebook or Instagram or any social media platform as well. Um, I have to so, just let yeah, you know that that is a caveat there. Yeah, but absolutely. Any, any I, program that you're going to use video has that included, though. Right, which I think for most of our teachers, and I think everybody here in the room, like we primarily work with the older students anyway. Okay. Um, and it being a, um, I don't want to call it remote because it's not anymore, but like we're not necessarily seeing all of our students every single day. Sure, whereas, sure. Whereas, like, having something like this where the student could record themselves, pop it onto here, then the teacher is giving that feedback to them or, you know, they're reading the thing that they wrote or they're having a conversation or right. they're, um, you know, replying to a, a prompt or, or whatever it might be. Like, it's a really simple and effective tool um, for making that happen. Absolutely. And it's it's a tool that students are very familiar with with regard to utilizing video. Um, so that's not something that really there's a lot of hurdles for students to um, they don't want to see themselves on camera. Um, they don't want to rewatch and watch and critique themselves. They they they're really used to that with um, social media platforms now a days as well. Absolutely. Um, they can also, if there is, so say they're, like you suggested, maybe it's them reading um, something that they wrote or something of that sort, you can easily have them attach it right to the assignment so everything can be located in one place as well. Or if this is from, you know, a professional development or an induction type of lens, any um, maybe handouts that you want to have them include or their lesson plan, something like that, you can absolutely have them, uh, the teachers attach it there so that maybe their mentor can see all, all of what is used in that particular video um, and be able to open them right there. And then I think I may have missed it because I was taking notes on my end, but we can customize the little circles that are underneath. Uh, yes, right. these okay. are 100% customizable. They. Um, you can have up to 30 different markers as well. So it really depends on what you want to utilize them for. Some people have one that just says great job. Um, so something that you don't want to keep typing over and over and over again. Maybe it's something that um, needs improvement. So you can, or refinement, you can absolutely have a marker for that. Um, I have some folks that utilize these that really connect directly to that rubric. And I need to see how many times I've used that marker to connect to that rubric. Um, I can see, and that'll go up to two when I um, use that marker twice. So maybe something that needs refinement, that would connect directly to maybe this first, um, the first thing. And maybe I mark them at a two rather than a four, something of that sort um, on that particular aspect, because I know, I noticed that there's a lot of things that need improvement. You can also see where at in their video, those things um, that you've noted or marked come to play. Yeah, I mean, I'm, this is just me speaking, but like, I think wonderful, like, there are a lot of different uh, applications. 
Yeah. Now, when you jump on, and one thing I forgot to mention, I apologize, but when you jump on maybe a call afterwards, maybe you're debriefing on that lesson or debriefing with that particular student, whether through Google Meets or if you choose to um, debrief directly through Go React, you can um, you can share your screen. And maybe I'm sharing my screen here, and I want to get to this particular spot that um, this teacher used their vocab words um, in their math lesson. So they're um, incorporating different lessons together. I can go ahead and click on this and it's gonna take me five seconds prior in my video. Now my internet has been going in and out and I wonder if that's why, cause my video paused as well. But um, it'll it, it, they're all hyperlinked. So it'll take you five seconds prior in the video, really providing you that context that you can watch together. There it goes. You can see that marker come up right there or that piece of feedback come up and then maybe I could pause this and then let's have a deeper, stronger, richer conversation surrounding that particular piece of feedback that I left and maybe talk through what could be changed next time. Maybe what, um, what, what were you feeling in this particular moment? Why did you use that particular classroom management strategy? Or um, that, that was a great way of incorporating your vocabulary words into your particular assignment um, for a student, something of that sort. Um, you can have those deeper, richer conversations there, um, making note after the fact as well so all of this is actually and every video will be saved for up to five years unless um uh, otherwise determined by you know privacy and security on your end we we will house everything um and as the administration er, all the videos are downloadable um all of the feedback that's left is all exportable um, all the rubrics are exportable as well um, we do have what's called our data API access and you have access to all your data to easily export it now when you easily export a lot of different data you're going to need um, someone who's going to uh, analyze that data as well but um, for easier access we have really rubric reports, course reports, those type of things um, that are complementary within the tool as well. Yeah, that's very cool. And so being able to just take everything else or take everything out all at once is really nice. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, this, you can also share this with a guest reviewer. Now this has to be enabled. Um, so your students aren't going to be able to share their video just with anybody without your consent to do so on that particular assignment. But, um, you can always share with any guest reviewers. So maybe this is, um, I want to share it with my, I, I'm the, um, new teacher and I had my mentor provide feedback. And I wanted to share the feedback, share the video, gain additional feedback from my principal or gain additional feedback from any coaches or um, colleagues. I can absolutely do so as long as that um, is enabled on that particular assignment. OK, and you just have to send an email there. Um, the other person won't be able to see any of the feedback that's already left. They'll just be able to add in their own additional feedback for that particular um, person that recorded this video. OK. Couple things I do want to mention. Um, we took a look at what GoReact is really built for. That is that self-reflection, that coaching lens for um, professional development, for induction, if you wanted to utilize it with your students and have your students create their videos. However, you also have the ability to upload a video and have your students assess that video or respond to that particular video with the video or through any text or any feedback. So we have what's called our um, and let me open this. We have what's called our stimulus. Now they're watching a video while recording a video at the same time. Okay. 
And then we have our comment only where the student or where the teacher is watching a prompt video and being able to assess that video through all of the feedback options that we talked about. Okay. Those two options just really stretch the world of how and um, the use cases that you can use GoReact Go um, in all different kinds of ways. We did talk about it being available for peer review if you wanted to open it up for peer review or just have those videos private. One thing that I've noticed most recently with time, time constraints, maybe I just want a 15 minute clip. Maybe I want a five minute clip. I can absolutely do that as well. And then there's that enable guest reviewers. I can make this a single recording attempt if you wanted to do something of that sort as well. Any other questions as you're seeing the tool unveil? I don't think so. Like I think we're all just, uh, I mean, it's, uh, I don't want to say it's a lot to take in, but like it's very simple and easy to navigate. And, you know, for what it is, I think a really powerful tool. Thank you. Yeah, it is very easy to get started. Um, <laughs> most people really get started within, I don't know, maybe two hours um, on a student level or on a person that is presenting their video level. It's so intuitive that we basically provide all of the resources that they need, but most people don't even need to access those resources to go into the tool and just submit a video. Right. Yeah. Um, look very user friendly. We have a whole client success team too that provides training, support, um, any implementation support on the um, on the district level, on the uh, school level as well. Um, they will do Zoom calls with everybody to make sure they're comfortable and confident using the tool. Uh, we provide self-paced resources that can always be accessed at a later time as well. Um, and then we also have our support team that's available to help teachers, administrators, but also um, students. They can email or chat and then our um, the, the administration does have phone, email, and chat support as well. Cool. So as we think about pricing, then is this mm -hmm. uh, based on like location? Is this based on building? Is it per user? How it would be? It would be based on per user, and it starts out um, just to give you an idea. It starts out at sixty six dollars per user per year, and that could be the academic year. That doesn't necessarily have to be a calendar year. Um, it just starts the day that the school decides that they wanted to start. And it goes down from there based on how many users each school has. Now, we do have some availability to um, decrease it if there's a three-year commitment as well. Um, and those pricing tiers, like I said, they happen quickly, but they happen, they start out at 100 users. Okay, so that's the the minimum is one hundred users. I'm sorry, I've, no, I was busy typing. It, just the first sorry. the first price break starts out at a hundred users. Okay. And I can and send that, that all be, over to you. Are there? Um, do you see all users as like one group, or is there a difference when you're talking about? Um, like teacher level versus admin level or people who are, you know, creating videos versus those who are, um, you know, providing feedback on videos. Do those They're kind all... of accounts differ or is it all just everybody has one account with all um, the same superpowers and whatnot and then that goes toward our total? Yeah, so everybody would have the same, um, they would need an account, they would need a license or a seat on your particular license. Um, however, you can give, 
different users, different access. So an administrator might want to see every single video and have access to every single um, video, whereas a um, instructor type role is only really going to have access to building particular courses. And then you have the presenter role. They're only going to have access to uploading their own videos. They don't have access to seeing anybody else's videos either without it being, of course, set up for peer review on that particular assignment. Okay, very cool. Yeah, I think okay. that makes a lot of sense. Um, I don't think there are any more questions here um, from okay. our friends in the room, but um, I thought this was wonderful. Like I said, like we do, um, we do quite a bit of this just here for our office because we service mm -hmm. 22 different districts in our area. Mm -hmm. And so like, I can see us getting this and, you know, bringing on users, you know, in the individual districts or whatnot to upload and, um, you know, connect with people that way too. Um, Absolutely. But, now, uh, just as we're talking about pricing too, if you are using it with students, there is a price break on that as well. It does okay. drop down just, just so you know, if you're using it with students, it's going to be $31.99 for that academic year. So it does it does drop so, down in price. So the the student accounts are just thirty one dollars or Correct. all accounts at that location are. No, it would just be if you're using it. So you have two different. Use cases, if you're using it with uh -huh. students, with K-12 students, it would be thirty one dollars and ninety nine cents per student per year. That's payable by the um, school or by the district. Okay. However, and if you're using it for induction or professional development with teachers, that's where that $66, um, that price comes to play. Okay. And you mentioned K-12. So this would not work then in, let's say, like a college setting where we're training teachers or training new, like, student teachers, basically? Yeah, so you can use it that. Considered. We have We have quite a, um, a few use cases in higher ed we're actually probably in i would say in some capacity probably in over 600 to 800 different teacher ed programs nationwide we are used in the uk as well um but about 600 to 800 different teacher ed programs nationwide um their pricing would be that 66 and drop down from there so the 31.99 is just to give the um, k-12 schools a little bit of a price break um so that they can utilize it with their students sure. as well sure okay that makes sense i just wanted to make sure um as we're communicating that out that um we have you know partner colleges in our area that we also work with and i didn't want to misspeak and tell them um, something that wasn't true but no problem. Um, if you want to, um, we can have the conversation afterwards as well with, as far as which schools those would include, because I can let you know if they are already using the tool um, or they're not as well. A lot of um, programs use the tool as well, again, for that portability aspect, but to save in travel costs and to save in travel budgets. Um, it, right. it, we have many schools that it's paid for itself they've saved money being able to reallocate those funds elsewhere too. Sure. Yeah. That makes complete sense. Complete Absolutely. Sense. Absolutely. Well, if any other questions come up, please feel free to let me know. Um, Matthew has my email. If anybody uh, needs to reach out directly, um, happy to provide additional resources for you, Matthew, as well. And um, that way, if you want to share it with any of the districts, anybody else that might be interested, um, they'll have those details as well. Um, if anybody needs any assistance, just let me know. Easy to reach me too. My email is just jessica at goreact.com.